Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're going to talk about uh, one of the most legendary marks, the Bugatti. Now, these are three Bugattis that have been on my website before. Uh, that's the only American body Bugatti ever made. That's a Murphy. That's a Type 37 supercharged. And this is also a Type 37 supercharged. And what's happened with Bugatti is they become so rare that a lot of people don't take them out anymore. You'll see I have my battery charges going, so I do drive these. I bought this car a number of years ago, quite a while ago. And in the course of owning the car, I found out it had been owned by Pierre Veron, the famous race car driver to which the new Bugatti Veron is named after. So now this car has gone up quite a bit in value. So what do you do if you like to drive Bugattis and you like to drive them hard, but you don't want to damage a piece of history? Well, come here, I'll show you. This, for all intents and purposes, is a Type 35 Bugatti. It was not made in France, it was not made by Bugatti. It was made by Pursin in Argentina. You might remember a while ago, they did that uh, beautiful Alfa Romeo. Here, take a look, and take a listen. They are now building this one too. This is a replica of the Type 35 Bugatti. And by replica, I mean that in the truest sense of the word. Just about every part of an original Bugatti has been replicated. There's no upgrade to power brakes or none of those things. Still has the cable brakes, still has the straight cut gears. The only difference is instead of it being, ro being a roller bearing crankshaft, it is a plane bearing crankshaft because let's face it, roller bearing crankshafts only last about 5,000 miles and then it's like $20,000 so it gets a little crazy. But we will go through this car, but I want you to meet a gentleman who is in charge of Persang, John Bothwell. John is the what, sales director? What do you call yourself? Just dir commercial director. Commercial right? director. Markets. Yeah, and uh, this is a fascinating company. They do these just, I mean, look at this car. It's almost, unless you're a Bugatti expert, you would not know that, uh, that it was not a real car. In fact, some rather unscrupulous people over the years have tried to sell these as real Bugattis, and in no way do they try to pass them off as real Bugattis. You do yeah. not. They are, they are copies. But the fun thing is, you can drive on them and beat on them hard the way you would have if you bought this car back in 1926. Tell us a little bit about the company and tell us how you got started. You know, the company has a fun history. It's basically uh, a, a story on par with what you just described about your Type 37. Uh, they're so valuable. A lot of people who would like to own them cannot. Right. Or if you own them, you don't want to drive them. Uh, right. it, was, it was the former in the case of the founder of Persang, Jorge Anadon, and he was restoring Bugattis, uh, always wanted one, knew he wouldn't be able to have it. And so while he had one disassembled, he did tooling for it and built himself a Bugatti and, and that was it. He thought it would be a one car project and well it wasn't. Um, we've built hundreds of these literally since then. Right. Um, this all began 30 years ago and uh, this, is, this has become the flagship product of the company in addition to a number of other makes. But the Type 35 continues to be our most popular car by far. Right. Now a real Type 35 Bugatti, a proper one, would run you Three to five million dollars? Yeah, in today's market. In exactly. today's market, yeah. three to five million. These run about what? You know, the, the, they're, they're, all our cars are about 10%, so you're in, the, in about the 250 range 250 for a car range. like this. 250 range, okay. Each car is built to order, so the customer brings his preferences and specifications, so there's always fluctuation in the yeah. cost. But to look at it a different way, our cars are roughly the same cost or cheaper than what it would cost to restore an original right. version. Right, right. And the interesting thing is Argentina is in a rather unusual place in that everything in Argentina, you're not allowed to import anything. Everything has to be made there. That's so correct. Everything, including the tires. We, we have to make everything in-house. We do our own tires. We have our own foundry, CNC shop, panel right. beating, leather. There's nothing to get shopped out. Let's uh, take you around this car. And you can see why people would confuse it with the real thing. You know, the word replica has been horribly misused. 
you know, you've seen these Bugatti replicas, uh, alleged replicas, and they have a Volkswagen engine in the back, or they're just horrible, just horrible things. Whereas this is true to the word replica. Look at that, exactly as the engine would have looked back in the day. I mean, obviously it's a more modern belt here, and as I mentioned before, plain bearing crank. And internally, I imagine it's upgraded a bit with metals that were not available back in the day. Yeah, and, and, and having said that, there are real no departures from the performance. Even the plain bearing crank is an option, which although many people elect, it's not mandatory. We have done cars with roller yeah. bearing cranks. Yeah. So basically, the customer comes to us and we can upgrade it to whatever degree they want, but that never goes beyond a plain bearing crank, perhaps a modified firing order, and you know, if somebody wants a hundred percent Molsheim stock car, we do that also, and right. we have. And the only difference is, of course, Bugatti's never had a fan. It has an electric fan, which, of course, you need in Los Angeles traffic. Right. Uh, it, is, it is pretty amazing. We'll we'll uh, take this for a ride in just a minute. But uh, eight cylinder, three valve, three valve per cylinder, right. two point three liter. Right. Uh, what's horsepower, about 122, something like that? Uh, you know, stock, these were about 140 horsepower. Oh, okay. And uh, our engines are roughly 180. Wow. Uh, when you take into account a different firing order, this particular car has a modified firing order on the engine, uh, plain bearing crank, uh, and then just newer metals. Right. Um, we, we dyno them between 170 and 180. And it has an electric starter, as they did back in the day. Mm -hmm. You can still start it on the crank if you like. I don't know why you do that, but you, you, you can. Um, Four-speed transmission, straight-cut gears. Looks, sounds, and feels like a proper Bugatti. Uh, now, there are some in the Bugatti club that tend to frown on these a little bit. If you have real ones like I do, you might be <laughs> But, you know, to me, anything that gets people interested in these cars because let's face it, the real ones are getting rarer and rarer, and pretty soon people won't see them on the streets anymore. So to hear it and smell it and feel it come down the road is, is a real treat. And it's fun to be able to drive it in the way it was intended. You know, it's a new car, so you can jam on the brakes, you can slam through the gearbox, and if something breaks, well, I know on mine we've, rep we've replaced gears and things of that nature. Everything is available for it. Uh, what does a car weigh? Uh, it's, it's roughly a, an 1,800-pound car, 16 to 1,800. Um, you know, that's the stock weight. You know, with 180 horsepower and that kind of weight and the shortness of the wheelbase, roughly 90-inch wheelbase, uh, it's very nimble. It's very right. agile okay. when you're driving. So you're, you're basically experiencing exactly what these were like new out of the factory at Molsheim back in the late 20s. And here is your supercharger right here? That's and a it, supercharger, yes. And it's funny, when you see the factory in Argentina, it is similar to what uh, Bugatti had in France, basically a farmhouse with a couple of buildings attached in a rural area right. and local <laughs> artisans building the cars. That's right. Yeah, pretty neat. I mean, it has, I mean, every nut and bolt is a copy. There's nothing, uh, there's no shortcuts here. You know, they're using the original thing. You make your own nuts and bolts. To, uh, we, we, we make yeah. everything in house. And another yeah. uh, important aspect to, to know about our factory is that we're not just trying to duplicate the end product, we're actually duplicating the build process that was used back in the late 20s. So you can see on the hood, you can see all the marks of a hand-formed piece of aluminum on an English wheel. You can see all the rivets that were hammered by hand, the file marks. This was something that was very artisan. Uh, that's how they were in Molsheim, that's how our cars are, and that's why each one is a little bit different than the next. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Let's, uh, let's take a look inside the dashboard here, in the cockpit, rather. Again, the only thing different from new is you have a distributor rather than a Magneto, but Magneto's run about 5,500 bucks, whereas this is what, a Ford Delco type? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a V8, Ford V8. Okay. Uh, distributor, so the, the basic assembly of the mag the horseshoe, the Bosch horseshoe mag is in there. There's just a distributor on the end right, right. with that cap. Okay, but that being said, Bugatti type clock, Bugatti type gauges. This here is a hand pump to pump oil into the sump if you're in a long race and you 
Want to get a little more oil in there. That's something that was funny about these cars is that they could go so fast that they ran into a problem that had never been had before, which is you would take a turn so quickly all your oil would splash out of the breathers right. and you'd have to fill it back up. So gotcha. our cars don't need that most yeah. of the time, but yeah. you've got it. But it's there. And there's your advance and, and uh, retard lever here. This is your Kai gas. What mm -hmm. you do is you pump that a few times to shoot a little fuel directly into the carburetor. Boy, these are a lot of fun to drive, as you'll see. Very, very few cars give you the visceral sense of driving that these do. You know, it's a classic case of, as much as I like supercars and that type of thing, this at 60 or 70 is as exhilarating as an F1 McLaren at 200 miles an hour. I mean, it really, well, you'll find out. You'll see what I mean. It's uh, the wind in your hair and the smell and the, you can smell the oil and uh, it's just a fantastic car. Your spouse will probably not want to ride with you, but that's okay. That's okay. This is for you to get out and Sunday morning and have some fun. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's let's take it for a ride. Let's start it up. There really aren't any modern cars that can match the thrill of driving one of these. How cool that 
guys from this century will get a chance to drive and, and feel what it was like to drive one of the most exhilarating automobiles of the last century. You know, I really applaud Persang for, for building these replicas. They're just fantastic, whether it's the Alfa or the Bugatti. Just amazing. I want to thank John Bothwell, Chris Sang, and all our friends in Argentina for doing such a wonderful job. If you really want to get a chance to feel what it's like, check out their website, Chris Sang. See you next week.